Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today, we'll be talking about the best $1,500 productivity setup you can get in 2022. With $1,500, you can do a whole lot. For this setup, I divided up the budget pretty reasonably with $1,000 going towards the PC and the remaining 500 going towards the monitor, peripherals, mouse pad, and decoration. And it really did turn out beautifully. We're looking at a black with white accent themed PC. Looks super clean, no RGB LEDs necessary. And you definitely cannot miss that huge 34 inch 1440p resolution monitor that will absolutely be able to handle all the tasks you may be doing on your PC. A beautiful keyboard and mouse and some cute plants to top it off. Now before I go in depth with talking about these different pieces, I first want to give you this quick message. Digitalchillmart.com is the best place to get cheap Windows 10 and 11 licensed keys. If you're building a PC or have built one but you're still running an unactivated version of Windows, Digital Chill Mart has you covered. Simply go to the front page of their website, scroll down a bit, and you'll find Windows 10 and 11 for great prices. And the prices get better. I have a coupon code for you guys to use. Type in Rutech right here and it'll be instantly applied. Link for digitalchillmart.com will be in my description. All right, so let's start by talking about the PC. This thing is a powerhouse. It has a super strong CPU, tons of RAM, tons of storage, but it also has a really nice GPU. We'll go more in depth about that later. Let's first talk about the CPU. It rocks an Intel i5-12600, which is a six core 12 thread processor with a max clock speed of 4.8 gigahertz. The new 12th gen i5s are no joke. This is the higher end i5 as opposed to its little brother, the i5-12400. With this processor, all of your productivity needs will be satisfied. It's super powerful and can seriously handle some heavy stuff, whether it be some massive PSDs in Photoshop, video editing high-res footage, editing batches of raw pictures with photography, music production, etc. The 12600, super fast, super versatile. And it's paired with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Nowadays, you only need 16 gigabytes for most tasks, but when it comes to more demanding productivity needs, 32 gigabytes is definitely recommended. For example, I used to try to edit my 4K footage with only 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that was quite disastrous. So I went ahead and upgraded to 32, and ever since then, editing 4K footage has been no problem. And not only that, I could not only edit my 4K footage with no problems, but I could also open other programs and run them in the background while editing that footage. So 32 gigabytes of RAM certainly gives you a ton of working freedom. You don't have to worry about closing programs and whatnot. For storage, a one terabyte Samsung Evo 970 Plus SSD. This is one of the higher end SSDs. We're talking some amazing read and write times. Booting up your PC will be near immediate. Loading programs, large files, stuff like that. Wait times become a thing of the past. And now to finally talk about that GPU, the NVIDIA RTX 3050, which actually does come with some great features even if you're not gaming at all. It has the NVENC codec, which comes in handy when you're, say, rendering a video or maybe live streaming or screen capturing. Beyond that, you're able to utilize the power of GPU acceleration, which really comes in handy with programs such as Photoshop and Lightroom, programs for video editing, 3D modeling, etc. And hey, let's not forget to talk about cooling. We're looking at two fans in the front for intake and three for exhaust, which should be more than enough even when you're doing some heavy tasks. The CPU cooler is ID Cooling's SE914 XT, which has a 126 millimeter fan and lovely design. Since we're using a locked 12600 CPU, anything overkill wasn't really necessary. This little cooler will absolutely get the job done. And yes, it does come with thermal paste, a whole tube of it actually. I ran CPU burner for about a half an hour and the CPU temp maxed out at around 73 degrees Celsius. So this cooler is more than enough. You'll never encounter overheating or thermal throttling. Now let's take a look at the display, the monitor, the Gigabyte G34 WQC. Some would say this is unreasonable or they'd rather have two monitors, but I would have to disagree. This is definitely the ideal choice for a productivity setup as it allows for you to have the same exact experience as a dual monitor setup, except it's more seamless. Also, this display is curved, so it compensates for the curvature of our eyes and makes things a lot more comfortable. 
the picture is phenomenal. We're looking at a resolution of 3440 by 1440. So you're getting just about the same pixel density as you'd get with a 27 inch 1440p monitor, except it's clearly a little bit wider. The panel is IPS, meaning you'll see some very deep and beautiful vibrant colors. The color accuracy is 90% DCI P3 to be exact. For refresh rate, it's 144 hertz, which isn't exactly necessary unless you're gaming, but even if you're not gaming, it makes your whole Windows experience a lot more premium feeling as everything feels and looks so smooth. The stand does adjust nicely, it can tilt and height adjust. Amazingly, you don't get that with some of these widescreen monitors. And it's Gigabyte. Their monitors have been really impressive for a while now. I've been using a Gigabyte monitor on my main setup for two years now, and it still holds up perfectly. I have no complaints. Now let's take a look at the peripherals, starting with the keyboard, the Keychron C1. This is a beautifully made mechanical keyboard that has excellent build quality and design. I'm personally not a fan of those flashy RGB all black or all white keyboards. I'm more of a fan of those modern looking keyboards, the ones Keychron makes. Now, of course, this is just my recommendation. You can use any keyboard you like, but again, I do highly recommend the Keychron C1. Let's listen to some audio samples of this thing in action. So yeah, super crispy, not too loud, and very satisfying. Also, it's not super expensive either. Now we have the mouse. I might have went a little bit overkill here, but it's definitely worth it. This mouse is premium and it's lovely to work with. I chose the Logitech G703 wireless mouse. Like I said, with a keyboard, any mouse is fine and you don't have to use this particular recommendation, but I can say with absolute confidence, this mouse, amazing. I've used this exact mouse on my main setup for a while and I've never had a single complaint and I'm not just talking about gaming, I mean doing work, video editing, music production, etc. It's comfortable to use, perfect shape, zero latency, responsive and satisfying clicks, etc. And here's another audio sample. So yeah, very nice mouse indeed, and if that's not quite within your budget range, the G305 is a great runner-up. And we can't forget about what that mouse will be sitting on, the mouse pad. It is never a bad choice to go with a full-size mouse pad, so I went with the Katero large mouse pad. The friction between the mouse and the pad is minimum, the mouse is gonna glide very nicely. But if that's not quite up your alley, obviously any other mouse pad will work. And last but not least, I can't forget to talk about the two most important things with this setup, the two little plants. These are just two plants I picked up at Target. They were about $10 and they add a great little bit of decor. And that will wrap it up for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, drop a comment below or join my Discord. Link is in the description and pinned comment. And of course, if you enjoy the content you're seeing, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. Thanks for watching, peace out.